watch your new show cause it's very sublime I'm so excited cause it really is time for 9 at 9 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 So tell us what's new, now let me throw you a cue It's 9 at 9 all right, number nine, there's a major dilemma going on in the UK right now. It's the great English breakfast debate. Most agree that sausage and bacon belong on the plate and beans, of course, but yeah. it gets tricky from there. What else should be included? Tomatoes mm. or mushrooms or both? Fried bread or toast? And what about the eggs? Fried scrambled or poached? There are whole groups devoted to this subject, including a nonprofit organization known as the English Breakfast Society. Oh, yeah. And a Facebook group called the Fry Up Police. Mm. They post all sorts of versions of the English breakfast, then wait for the comments to come in. Things can really get heated because people are very passionate about what should yeah, be in an official. That's a big breakfast. It, is. Yeah. Of course it definitely they, has, has the beans, right? I mean, that's I the guess. key component. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, they're probably looking at our grand slam there. And, and what is that? I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. probably going, they're oh, yeah. Here, yeah. You guys are real health nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of oh. love a grand slam. Yeah. Oh. That is. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Last time we went to Denny's for breakfast. Right, we should go there right now if you yeah. guys want to show yeah. outing. Yeah. Oh, All right, good Paul. stuff. All right, number eight. Uh, we got a text message yesterday about the old nasal lavage. It sounds dirty, but it's uh, just a <laughs> phrase to describe methods of cleaning out your schnoz. Uh, and we found that there are all sorts of photos oh, out there of how to get the mucus so out of your sinuses. So we do oh. two things here. We get to see great pictures of people blowing it out their schnozzes, oh. and we get to say mucus. Look at that, that's a fun. Oh. The video is always better. Oh. Hard to look sexy while doing the old <laughs> nasal lavage. That just is not right. Oh, that God. Maybe tomorrow we can do video. Oh, um, that kid looks happy. The old yeah. farmer's blow is kind of what it is. <laughs> yeah. You can do a live demo with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of our sponsored segments. Yeah. You know, yeah Timmy, right. Timmy does those or real. maybe we work it into our St. Patrick's Day <laughs> okay. uh, thing. A sure, live right? nasal lavage. A live, yeah. Or a live farmer's blow contest. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, Jimmy Kimmel joked about it. Turns out they really did have snack boxes under every seat at the Oscars. Each box included a soft pretzel, a box of candy like Raisinets or Sour Patch Kids, and a bottle of water. There was also a handwritten note from Kimmel that said, eat this if you're hungry, and a donation made in Kimmel's name to the L.A. Regional Food Bank. Oh, nice. You gotta sit there for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. Number six, we were talking about the, Mar the Marion Trench yesterday, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which got us thinking, how deep is Lake Michigan? All right. Check out this map. Chicago is in the bottom left. All right. And the red part shows water that is near the shore. Okay. okay? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the water there is under 50 meters deep in all oh, spots. Right. It's generally never deeper than 60 yeah. feet near the shore, and that extends about eight miles out. Now, when you get yeah. way up north near Green Bay on the Wisconsin side yeah. and, uh, and Traverse City on the Michigan side, the blue spot in the middle of Lake Michigan there is the deepest. They uh -huh. say the deepest is about 925 feet, uh -huh. which... That's exciting. Means nothing to me. I'd well, have to... the Sears Tower is like twelve or thirteen hundred, so I put it in that Ooh, context. It's a knowledge yeah. of theory. Uh, you know, people. Yeah, yeah people think I'm a pretty face. Big brain, yeah. big brain. So that gives you some context. Huh. I like also that we worked meters and feet into the same story. Yeah. I was going to say. Screw the meters thing. No one understands meters, but. Uh, See, yeah. me guessing feet and meters is kind of like that jelly bean game in a jar. Oh, I am I never even game. close, yeah, never yeah. even remotely close. Yeah. So That could be another fun segment for the St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> How many jelly beans are in the jar? Oh, that's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, make everyone pay like $5 to get <laughs> in. Get it. There's money to be made out of this. You know what? It's just too bad you didn't show up at that meeting yeah. because you had so <laughs> well, many ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I got to believe that the guys in the sales department would love to have me back there also <laughs> pitching these <laughs> right. things, right? I bet they right? would. I bet they would. All right, let's move on to number uh -huh. five. Uh, Red Bull knows a thing or two about how to make their uh, video, cool videos for their social media. Uh, and this is from Dubai, where a pilot named Luke Zapila or something like that is attempting to land a plane on top of a 56-story building. But the landing is made for helicopters, not planes. And it's only about 85 feet in diameter. He practiced landing uh, in safer spots about 650 times before he made this crazy attempt. He and a crew made all sorts of changes to the plane to make it possible. And uh, you have to notice there's a second challenge. He needs to get enough power to take off from there as well. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. 
No thanks. Let's see. Oh, does he, do we see him take well, off? I hope so. I think the... <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. Whoa, oh, God. Oh, oh, you're in a plane. Oh, oh. I think there's yeah. a little extra drama there. Oh. That's why you have runways. Right. Number four, more weddings, showers, birthday parties are going gift-free. According to Evite, there is a 20% increase in people asking guests to show up for the events without gifts. Good. Financial experts say this time they really mean it. They feel guilty asking for more in the midst of inflation and financial insecurity. Some uh, where the guests won't show up if they can't afford to attend, so they're making it clear we mean it and do not bring gifts. Your presence uh, is gift enough. We need more of that. Yeah, I agree. Um, on to number three, Ben Franklin wasn't a big fan of the old uh, scrub it up dub. According to historians, he preferred air bathing oh, to yeah. actual bathing. Uh, he just opened all the windows and sped between 30 minutes to an hour, hanging out in the nude. Yep. Oh, it's a great way uh, to do it. He liked to expose himself to the uh, elements. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the neighbor lady. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, to air himself out there. Franklin also had another reason for doing this. He had breathing problems, so oh. he thought exposure to fresh air would keep him from getting sick. Sure. Also showed the importance of proper ventilation when it came to the spread of virus and disease, which is something uh, that we still, of course, rely on today. He yeah. wasn't too smart about the cleanliness, though. You need a, yeah, you you need a little soap down, every now and yeah. then, especially when you're not washing those clothes back then as often. And there's sure. a lot of, there's no air conditioning, a lot of sweaty. Yeah. Clothes yeah, and lock. Yeah. You do the old cowboy's bath or the whore's bath, however you call it, where you just get the, the pits and stuff. Oh, That'll get you through a few yeah, days. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, number two from the great Twitter feed, old time baseball photos. This is from Billings, Montana, probably in the early 1900s. As they note, for any baseball player who thought the green monster at Fenway Park was intimidating, <laughs> and the distance is the Rim Rocks formation. Just a cool photo. That is cool. Um, all right, number one, for the earliest days in competitive track and field, athletes attempted the high jump feet first. Who knew? Huh. From the first Summer Olympics in 1896, there were multiple variations, like a barrel roll or a scissor kick. Oh, I see. But uh, pretty much every jumper tried to do it feet first. Yeah. But at Oregon State, look at that, in the yeah. 1960s, Dick Fosbury was trying to find a better way, so he experimented with a few moves, and by his senior year, he realized the best way to do it was to go over the bar backwards, head first, curving his body over the bar, kicking his legs up in the air at the end of the oh. jump. He won an NCAA title, and it's been, you know, called the Fosbury flop. Yeah, the Fosbury flop. Since yeah. then. And when he was at the Olympics in Mexico City in 1968, he changed everything with his flop. He took the gold medal, set a new Olympic record, seven feet four and a quarter inches. Wowee. The next Olympics in 1972, 28 of the 40 competitors used his technique. Now basically mm -hmm. everybody does it. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, he just died on Sunday. Oh, no Who oh, knew? All right. Well, I do uh, because you had it on the bottom of the screen for the last oh, minute or two. I wasn't yeah. No, at yeah, the, no, no. Yeah. He's busy reading. He was reading the prompter. Yeah. Well, that's the nine at night. Yeah. It's nine at night.